Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 to verse 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. I'm sure you remember that we are still in our month of dedication for supernatural shift. And this is midweek service. So we shall be having the message titled, The Duty of Man. And it may be a two-part preaching. So this may be part one, The Duty of Man. Our assignment, our objective is to understand what the whole duty of man, the, the duty of man is as far as God is concerned. Understanding the whole duty of man. The second thing is to understand the fear of God. And the third is to understand the benefits of the fear of God. We want to understand the whole duty of man, want to understand the fear of God, and want to understand the benefits of the fear of God. Two basic duties have been enumerated in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 and 14. Two duties. Number one, duty. Fear God. Number two, duty. Keep his commandments. Fear God. Then keep his commandment. It is when your duty is understood that your destiny can be guaranteed. When your duty is understood and undertaken that destiny can be guaranteed. It is when we do what God wants us to do that we can become who God wants us to become. So, we are here tonight to look at duty number one. That is called the fear of God. Fear God. Fear God. The question is, what is the fear of God all about? of God and reverence they move hand in hand you know the way children in Africa are taught to respect elders the way we are taught to respect royalty and to reverence royalty in our clan multiply that many times that is what the fear of God refers to you know when, a ch when they say a child does not fear adults means he's looking at you, you are looking at him, he's, he can't say good morning, he can't say thank you. If an adult steps into a room, he doesn't know how to stand up from the chair like we do in Africa. And they say, oh, that child doesn't fear, doesn't fear adults. Doesn't fear people. It means he has no sense of reverence, no respect. The fear of God means a heavy sense of respect for Jehovah. A heavy weight of reverence for your maker. A heavy weight of honor for your creator. You know. Everybody who knows you know that you honor God. Everybody who knows you know that you respect God. Everybody who knows you know that you reverence God. That is what the fear of God means, number one. Number two, it means not taking God and his principles for granted. You are not taking God and his principles or standards for granted. You are not, you are not exhibiting any trace of over-familiarity with God. Those who don't fear God are overly familiar with God. They are familiar, too familiar with spiritual things. You are not taking God. There 
there is not a trace of familiarity in his presence, not a trace of carelessness in God's presence. Joseph speaking in, in Genesis chapter 42 verse 18 said, but I fear God. I fear God. Beloved brothers and sisters, we live in a highly irreverent society. We live in a very highly casual generation where the fear of God has largely disappeared from the church. You see people do in God's presence what they will not do in the presence of a governor or a mortal king. They won't. And that is why the move of God is so dry in the lives of so many people. So casual, so careless. There are those for the whole of the 60 minutes or one hour in service, they are busy communicating with another person on the phone somewhere. Something you cannot do before an earthly king. To ingum, permanent. Some people say they do that to keep them awake in church. But I doubt whether that is easily doable in front of a king. No familiarity, no trace of familiarity with God. The fear of God is our number one duty. Number three, what does it mean to fear God? It means existing in the consciousness of the judgmental side of God. Existing in the consciousness of the judgmental side of God. Understanding that God is a God of mercy who is also the God of judgment. In Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28 and 29 where we read he said where, whereby we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Why? For our God is a consuming fire. Fear him because he can consume. Existence in the consciousness of the judgmental side of God. Many Christians are familiar with the God of mercy, but they are ignorant of the God of judgment. Many claim to love God, but they don't fear God. Am I communicating at all? You know, there, are, there were only very few people God called his friend in, by, in scripture. Number one, Abraham. Number two, Moses. Number three, David. The friend of God. They were called officially. And this Moses who was his friend, one day his friend changed eye. He saw the red eyes of God. When he, he, he carried out an instruction contrary to what God said. God said he should speak to the rod. He smoked, he smoked the rock twice. And spoke to the children of Israel. You rebels. Must I give you water from this rock? And God said, Moses, you have touched the tail of a, a lion. And you will learn a lesson you will never forget. You will take the children of Israel to the foot of the promised land. But you will never enter. You disobeyed me. You failed to honor me in the eyes of these people. You will take them to the foot of the mountain. You will never enter. Climb this mountain. Look at the other side of Jordan. See the land. Joshua will take the people to the land which only your eyes will see but will never enter. When they were at the foot of the mountain, Moses begged God, please permit me, I'm sorry. God said, don't mention this matter anymore. It's a closed chapter. That's the kind of God we are talking about. That is the kind of God we are talking about. Don't mention it anymore. So it is important that we understand 
that the God of, of mercy is a God of judgment. There are those who only understand the love of God. They, don't, they are not aware of the judgment of God. And there are others who are also at the other extreme. They only know the judgment of God. For them, everybody, God is looking for who to send to hell. They don't know the love of God. There is a neat, healthy balance. Romans chapter 11 verse 22 talks about the goodness and the severity of God. That we serve a God who is both, who combines goodness with toughness. The goodness and behold the goodness and the severity of God. On them which fell, severity, but towards you, goodness, if you continue in his goodness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. This is New Testament, where grace is preached. You will not miss it. The fear of God, number four, what the fear of God means? Maintaining a conscience that is void of offense towards God. And towards man. A conscience that is clean of offense. According to Acts chapter 24 verse 16. You are living in the realm. Where you can't afford to offend God. Here and herein do I exercise myself. To have always a conscience. Void of offense. Towards God. And towards men. You, are, you, you can't afford to offend God. You can't afford to offend God, your conscience is clear. Your conscience is clean. Those who don't fear God, I mean, they can do anything. They don't care what God feels. They don't care what man feels. But when you fear God, what you do towards God matters to you. And what you do towards your fellow man matters to you. Am I communicating at all? It matters to you. You have a conscience that is working. There are people who don't have a working conscience. They have a conscience that is dead. When someone is in pain, they are not aware. They don't care. Whatever happens to God, they don't care. When you fear God, you have a conscience that is awake. A conscience that pricks. The fear of God. When you fear God, what does it result into? What kind of action do you embark upon from the fear of God? What actions will the fear of God provoke? Number one, to fear God is to keep his commandments. He says, fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Fear God and keep his commandments. So, when you cannot fear God and not keep his commandments. That is, you want to do what he says. You don't want to argue with him. Let me want what you want, oh my dear Lord. Let me love what you love, oh dear Lord. That is how you design life to be Lord. God, help me, Lord, to live how I ought. That is how He designed life to be. That is how He designed it. Those who don't fear God, they can carry the Bible, toss it upside down. Is this one means? No, I don't think so. It can't mean so. God, can you know, just, just, just. They are in negotiations with God. To fear God is to keep his commandments. Number two, to fear God is to depart from evil. Is to depart from evil. In Ecclesiastes, Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13. Proverbs chapter 8 and in verse 13 it said to fear. It said the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. In fact, to fear God is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, the evil way, the forward mouth. Do I hate? 
if you fear God, you hate evil. If you fear God, you cannot be recruited into wickedness. You can, they can't look at your face and call you to join them, pull down somebody. You can't. Anything that is wicked is hated by you. You can't fear God and be involved in the pain of another. You can't fear God and be fraudulently involved in what is not correct. You can't. There is something inside you that hates evil. Are you following what I'm saying here? Wickedness, evil. You can't, you can't be there. The fear of, lack of the fear of God will make a lecturer fail a child because he refused to bribe him. I was talking to a young boy the other day. I may not, I, I, I don't know whether he is truthful, but he said that in his 400 level, a particular exam officer asked him to bring money and he refused. And he said, I will show you. Long story made short, he manipulated his results until he was withdrawn from the school in 40 years. How will such a person face God in eternity? Or somebody send his daughter to school and you, have, and you thought you have found a, a sin partner. Commit sin with me, otherwise I'll fail you in exam. Do you understand that kind of a thing? It is the bankruptcy of the fear of God why you see people selling other people's Selling human beings and call it spare parts. No fear of God. Somebody, demonic demon entered his head. He carry a whole human being. And is negotiating on the head of a person. Send something, something million. The Lord kill every killer in this nation. Are you following what I'm saying here today? A conscience that is gone is dead. Take your sin. What of the fear of God? When the fear of God is there, you will not plot anyone's downfall. You won't be involved in anything that does not glorify God. You won't, you won't be involved in what hurts God or hurt man. To fear God is to hate evil. And thirdly, to fear God is to reverence and worship him. Reverence and worship. You reverence, you worship him. Second Kings chapter 17, I think verse 36. I saw a connection. But the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt with great power and a stretched out arm, him shall you fear. And because you fear him, him shall you worship and to him shall you do sacrifice your worship will flow out of your reverence out of your fear of god psalm 5 verse 7 also mentioned but as for me i will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy and in thy fear will i worship Toward thy holy temple, in thy fear, in your reverence, in reverencing and fearing you, I will worship. Psalm, Psalm 96 verse 9 also made the point clear. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, fear before him all the earth. Listen, the deeper your reverence of God, the deeper your worship. The, when you see people, when you see people um, at times prostrate and lie down even on, on mud ground when you see some people tears flowing like water when you see some people behave as if they are nobody before God it is not stupidity it is not lack of mannerism something conquered their heart hallelujah I have a heart 
by, by his grace that can be very, very audacious, very forceful, aggressive. <laughs> very, 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 very. I told myself, I say, if I was in the military and I was an Air Force man, I would be a fighter pilot. But when I am in the presence of God, the opposite heart appears. Am I communicating at all? The fear of God, the fear of God conquers your heart. It deepens your worship. I see somebody experiencing the baptism of that fear tonight. What are the benefits of the fear of God tonight? Number one, access to divine wisdom. Any man, any woman who walks in the fear of God can never lack wisdom. Job chapter 28 verse 28, he said, And to man he said, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. That is wisdom. So 111 verse 10, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 9, Verse 10 also, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who fear God are connected to divine ideas. The fear of the Lord links you up with divine inspiration. Strategic concepts. Access to divine wisdom. The meaning of that is... Whenever a person does not walk in the fear of the Lord, he will walk in the abundance of stupidity. A lot of reckless mistakes. A lot of careless moves. Two, access to unusual insight and divine secrets. This insight is different from the first one. The, the, the first one is divine ideas and so on. This one is scriptural insight and divine secrets. In Psalm 25 verse 12, he said, What man is he that feareth the Lord? He is the one he will teach his way. If you fear God, when you open the scripture, if the scripture opens to you, God will cause you to see what normal eyes can see. People will say, but I've been reading that passage before. He will teach such a person. And in verse 14 he said, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. There are things God will never show the careless. When your fear of God multiplies, your insight doubles. Secrets, what God will show others. This is, he says he will show you his covenant. The meaning of that is, if you want me to do this, this is what you should do. You do this and you will see this. Move like this and I will move like that. He will show you covenant. This is the role you will play if you want me to play this role in your life. This is what you will do. It will be clear to you while others are confused. Hallelujah. Number three, access to rest and satisfaction. That man that fears God in Psalm 12, sorry, Psalm 25 verse 12, he said, what man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. Verse 13 said, His soul shall dwell is. That word is, is the word rest, is the word satisfaction. Rest. It will not be under tension. The fear of the Lord is deliverance from pressure. Is deliverance from stress. Is deliverance from tension. His soul shall dwell at ease. Not the kind of ease that he say warned to them that are at ease in Zion. That's not the time. This word is different. Satisfaction. And then number four. 
the guarantee of godly and great offspring. Your fear of God will guarantee that your seed is godly and your seed are great. He said, where we read in Psalm 25 and in verse 13, his soul shall dwell at ease and his seed shall inherit the earth. He cannot give birth to useless children. Psalm 112 verse 1 to 2. He said, blessed is the, praise you the Lord, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that fears God, that fears God, that fears God, that delights greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Fear God. Avoid evil. Be conscious that God is a judgmental God as well as a loving God. Reverence him deeply. Then he will cause the children that will come out of you to be vital, to be relevant, to be crucial, to be critical to their generation, to be loaded with deposit. Am I communicating at all? See the children of most wicked people, very useless children. Huh? Some of them, the father is in the occult, the child is the capoon of the campus cult. Carrying gun and carrying knives everywhere. They arrest him, his father release him. They arrest him, his father release him. They arrest him, his father release him. Until somebody's bullet from another cult takes him out. Killing and being killed. Living dangerously and dying recklessly. Am I communicating at all? It's corrupt money used to sponsor your children to school. And then they, they are useless. You stole the money of everybody. Use it to buy them flashy cars and use it to, you know, they can never be useful. Never. The scripture cannot be broken. And God is faithful. Who will never break his word? And for everyone here today, you will never give birth to useless children. And I announce, I prophesy to you, your children shall be useful. Your generation shall be useful. Your children shall be useful. If you are saying amen, say it louder. Amen. And everybody having any challenge with any child now, I declare they are rescued. They are recovered from the hand of the enemy. Take your seat. Am I communicating at all? Very important. For the security of your next generation, walk in the fear of God today. For the security of your offspring, walk. For their destiny and dignity, walk in the fear of God. That, is, that was number four, right? Number five is access to divine treasure and wealth. Access. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. That delight greatly in his commandment. Delighted. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches. Psalm 112. Verse 1, I'm in verse 3 now. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endure it forever. That is, if you walk neatly, God will show you neat ways of money making. Neat ways. Like he showed to Job. The man in the land of Oz. Job chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. That man was upright. That man feared the Lord. That man was perfect in all his ways. That man hated evil. And he was the richest man in all of the east. The fear of the Lord will connect you. Clean, neat resources. Clean. Tidy money. Tidy money. Money that is not blood stained. Well, that he didn't pull down somebody to go up. Access to divine resources and wealth. Number six, access to direction. In the midst of generational darkness. Access. In verse four of Psalm 112, he's still speaking about the man. Unto that upright man. There ariseth light in darkness. 
that man who fears God, who is upright, there ariseth light in darkness. You cannot be buried in generational darkness when men say they are cast down, you know what to do. Walk in the fear of the Lord, you will know what to do. Somebody say, Amen. You will know what to do. When it was time to get married, by God's grace, by his help, there were no two or three people that God let this speaker to consult for marital purpose. One person. When it was time to step, and that person is the person that the speaker is married to. When it was time to step into ministry, there wasn't a matter of is it here, is it there? It was clear. There was clarity. Somebody seated here today, clarity shall be your portion. If you had had confusion in time past, lack of direction in time past, the last time shall be the last forever. And every time we give examples, it's not for the purpose of intimidation, but motivation. To let you know what is possible. And it is possible with you. And it shall be possible with you. What is the benefit? Number six. Seven. Access to divine life. Proverbs 19.23 Access to divine life. The fear of the Lord tended to life. It tended to life. Life. The life of God. Abundant life. Meaningful life. Quality life. The fear of the Lord ushers you into life. Fear God well. And the devil that can take you out before your time does not exist. Mommy was telling me testimony about how you were going to go for that occasion. And then I asked you not to go. And then the place was surrounded with those looking for you. It is themselves they are looking for. Hallelujah. Take your seat. It tended to life. It was um, a funeral occasion, very close person to his life that he was about to go for in his country. And I said, oh, his funeral is ready and he's about to go. And I said, don't go. Send other people to go. It looks, it looks, it, it looks insensible. Don't go. Just um, let other people, let somebody represent you and others should go. And he didn't go. He listed and didn't go. I didn't ask you to flash the... <laughs> and after the funeral was done, some people arrived, gunmen, and said, where is he? Over 20. He is not here. And he cannot be here. Prophetic cover block the devil. And nobody can look for you like that and survive it. I'm not sure that those people are alive now. They can be. Nobody can look for you like that and, and survive it. The fear of the Lord tended to life. I announce to someone here, you will not be cut short before your time. I said you will not be cut short before your time. Take your seat. All that I ask of you, just go and fear God. Let your conscience, don't do things that will kill your conscience. Let it remain alive. Let your conscience be able to prick you if you tell small lies. By the time you are doing things and you are not feeling anything anymore, the fear of God is dying. Finally, protection from the visitation of evil. That was what he read. The fear of the Lord tended to life. He that has it shall abide satisfied. We already referenced that. 
in, in our point number three. He shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. A man who has the fear of God is not permitted to be visited with evil. When you fear God, you may appear like a sheep before people, but you are a lion in the spirit. You may appear like a weakling physically because you don't do bad things. You just, you just don't have, when they are trying to castigate people, you are away from it. You may appear like a sheep before people, but you are a lion in the realm of the spirit after the order of the lion of the tribe of Judah. You are not a weakling fearing God. It is a strength to fear God. He shall not be visited with evil. Every evil packaged for you, packaged for your family, packaged for your loved ones, packaged for our church, packaged for our nation Nigeria, I declare that evil shall catch fire. Stand on your feet if you are saying amen like a believer. Shout amen like a believer. Remain standing. Proceed, beloved brothers and sisters in deep reverence for God in deep worship go and fear him determine don't take God for granted don't let anybody be playing with you when service is on don't let service time be discussion time with your friend Finish the discussion from outside or continue after service. Because God watches our actions. The Bible says with him, actions are weighed. Am I communicating? They say the president of Nigeria called you to have a discussion with you and you went in his presence and you are sleeping. He's talking to you, you are sleeping. Is it possible? Sleep at home. If you have to come and sleep in church, sleep it at home. Let's, let's not, you, God cannot do any serious thing with an unserious person. If your destiny must be glorious in God, you must be serious with God. In our university, we will do three days dry fasting, no water. And then you will be praying for seven, eight, nine, ten hours. And then you will come. All manner of ruggedness. Somebody is tapping you, trying to gist with you. you. You are on your own. In heaven, you, in, in heaven, there is nothing like this is husband, this is wife. We will know each other. And hopefully we will live close to each other. Am I communicating at all? Don't, you, don't let any human being determine your devotion. Or otherwise. Somebody say amen. Be conscious that God is a judgmental God. Don't let him feel that you are taking his mercy for granted. Don't let him feel so. Let your conscience be void of offense. Anywhere evil is being planned, let your name not be called that you were there. Excuse yourself and move. Anywhere a person's character is being assassinated, don't be, don't be referred. There are those who come to you and say, did you hear what this person did? And then they will go and tell the other person, the other day, it was, it was, that so-and-so person was discussing you. Not knowing that they were the ones that brought the discussion. And they only quoted what you said. They didn't say what they said. Which were the ones who started the talk. Wicked human beings. One thing I learned, I, I heard that silence cannot be misquoted. Nobody can say... He didn't say anything, but I know if he has spoken, this is what he will say. 
<laughs> Silence cannot be misquoted. There are, there are, there are, there are times people are talking to you are just nodding your head. When you definitely say bye, let it be practical. This year, you will go far. This year, Christianity will produce results in your life. Lift up your hands and give him the praise of this morning.